in our society, these substances, these plant plot products and these synthetic substances, and these tremendously wonderful things about them and these tremendously horrible things about them that can be so tempting and so unattractive, we need to find a decent way to deal with the inevitable fact that these things are in our lives and in our societies. That kids can get involved with this stuff at points where they're vulnerable, and that parents' greatest fear, you know, every parent who wants to put their baby in a bubble and sees that marijuana joint those other drugs is the things that will pop that bubble. We need to reassure them, and oftentimes them is us, because we don't win unless we do that. Now when Governor Johnson is out there, he's opened up some running room. But you know, when some people got up on the Capitol in Santa Fe two weeks ago, smoking marijuana publicly to express their support for Governor Johnson, I don't think he saw that as an expression of support. It wasn't the way to support him. The way to support him is to reaching the parents, reaching the parents of New Mexico to persuade them that their interests and their kids' interests. So for me, the question is, what's the decent way to move forward? What's the decent way to protect our kids? What's the decent way to live as a society? That's the question. That's it. I know we're going to win this one. I know we're going to win this one. We've learned a lot of lessons. Let's keep those things in mind. Never lose the passion. Acknowledge that conflict is inherent to any political movement, and what happened here is enormously healthy, healthy, right up to Ed Rosenthal screaming at the top of his lungs. Okay? That's part of the process. When you look at drug, when you look at drug policy reform as an emerging political and social movement in America, compare us. I've been reading about the history of the gay rights movement, the civil rights movement. You know something? They had more conflict than we do at similar points in their development. We're not doing so bad. We're not doing so bad. So we are going to get there. I think you're all doing great. I think Keith Allen, fantastic, and Dan and Lester and Dick, what you did to keep it going, fantastic. You are great. See you next year. It's fine. Here we are in... Uh Sunny, sunny Washington, Washington D.C. D.C. and uh, middle of the heart of darkness, <laughs> a place that's the sausage factory of American social policy, where money talks, and uh, money talks louder and louder ever since the Supremes <clears throat> defined free speech as free spending which I think is really degrading America and uh, is part of the new subversion that has taken place of remunerative demonic mercantilism where we have the social institutions that we once knew being suborned and subverted by mercantilia. We've seen religious thought in America give way to icons and uh, popular images. We've really stripped the Christ out of Christmas and uh, substituted it for a festival of mercantilia, which uh, they try to prolong as much as possible into the fourth quarter of the year. And this unfortunately has uh, now metastasized as and is infesting our social institutions including medicine which is a tragedy once upon a time we physicians used to have prerogatives and respect and this is before the era of the uh, mercantilization of medicine where it was once fee for service and there weren't any third party payers on the other hand, we had a well-developed, civil-supported hospital system where everybody knew what the rules were. There was stability and succession. But then in the 80s, with the uh, ascension of the Reagan hegemony, after having destroyed the California mental health system and closed all the hospitals with a fraudulent claim of 
community psychiatry and uh, shifting the uh, responsibility to the community 